Hey everyone, welcome to IntelliPath. Docker and Kubernetes are two of the most popular containerization tools in DevOps lifecycle. Which one to choose? This is what we're going to discuss in this video on Docker versus Kubernetes. But before we move forward, do subscribe to IntelliPath's YouTube channel so that you never miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Now let's have a look at the agenda for this video. So guys, first and foremost, we'll discuss what exactly is Docker and what exactly is Kubernetes. After that, we'll understand the features in both Docker and Kubernetes, followed by the parameters based on which we'll differentiate between both Docker and Kubernetes. Then we'll discuss the limitations of both. Finally, we'll conclude our video by discussing which one is better to choose. We'll also have a short quiz based on the video. Make sure you put down your answers in the comment section below to know if you're correct. Also guys, if you're looking to get certified in DevOps, then do check out IntelliPath's DevOps certification training course. So the link is given in the description box. All right guys, now without any further ado, let's get started. As discussed, let us first understand both of these terms that is Docker and Kubernetes. First and foremost, what exactly is Docker? So guys, Docker is a platform used to containerize your software using which you can easily build your application, package them with the dependencies required for application into the container. And further, these containers are easily shipped and run on the other machine, right? So Docker is simplifying the DevOps methodology by allowing developers to create templates called images using which you can create these lightweight virtual machines called as containers. Docker is making things easier for software industries, giving them the capability to automate the infrastructure, isolate the applications, maintaining consistency and improving the resource utilization, right? So as we have discussed about what is Docker, now let us move forward and discuss what exactly is Kubernetes. So guys, Kubernetes is a container management system developed in the Google platform. It helps you to manage a containerized application in various types of physical, virtual and cloud environments. So Google Kubernetes is highly flexible container tool to deliver even complex applications consistently. Applications run on clusters of hundreds to thousands of individual servers. Right guys. So now as we have discussed about both Docker and Kubernetes, let us move forward and discuss about the features of Docker. And some of them are as shown below. So first and foremost, easy and faster configuration. This is one of a key feature of Docker in which you can easily deploy your code in less time and effort as you can use Docker in a wide variety of environments. The requirements of the infrastructure are no longer linked with the environment of the application, helping in configuring the system easily and faster. Second point to note is that you can easily use Swarm also. Guys, so it is a clustering and scheduling tool for Docker containers. So Swarm uses the Docker API as its front end, which helps us to use various tools to control it. It also helps us to control cluster of Docker hosts as a single virtual host. It is a self-organizing group of engines that is used to enable pluggable backends. Right guys, now the another point to note is that the security management. So guys, Docker allows us to save secrets into the swarm itself and then choose to give services access to certain secrets. It includes some important commands to the engine like secret inspect, secret create and etc. So the fourth point is services. Services is a list of tasks that lets us specify the state of the container inside a cluster. Each task represents one instance of a container that should be running and swarm schedules them across the nodes. Now the another point to note is the increased productivity. By easing technical configuration and rapid deployment of application, no doubt it has increased productivity. Docker not only helps to execute the application in isolated environment, but also it has reduced the resources also. Now guys, another point to note is application isolation. So it provides containers that are used to run applications in an isolated environment. So each container is independent to another and allows us to execute any kind of application. So as we have discussed about the features of Docker, now let us understand the features of Kubernetes. So guys, Kubernetes itself has got tremendous amount of features which are as follows. You can run Kubernetes everywhere. So Kubernetes is an open source tool and gives you the freedom to take advantage of on-premises, hybrid or public cloud infrastructure, letting you move your workloads to anywhere you want, right? Another point to note is that it automates various manual processes. For instance, Kubernetes will control for you which server will host the container, how it will be launched, etc. Next point, it interacts with several group of containers. Kubernetes is able to manage more clusters at the same time. And it provides additional features as well as the management of containers. Kubernetes offers security, networking and storage services. It also gives you the provision of self-monitoring as it checks constantly the health of nodes and containers itself. Also, it provides you horizontal scaling. 
A quick info guys, if you're looking to get certified in DevOps, then do check out IntelliPath's DevOps certification training course. The link is given in the description box below. All right guys, now let's resume with the session. So guys, Kubernetes allows you scaling resources not only vertically, but also horizontally, easily and quickly, right guys? So guys, as we've discussed about the features of both Kubernetes and Docker, now let us move forward and discuss some of the parameters of Kubernetes and Docker. First and foremost, the architecture of Docker. So guys, in Docker architecture, it uses a client server architecture. The Docker client consists of Docker build, pull and run. The client talks to the Docker daemon, which further helps in building, running and distributing the Docker containers. So guys, Docker client and daemon can be operated on the same system, otherwise you can connect the Docker client to the remote Docker daemon. So these both communicates with each other using REST API over Unix sockets or a network. So guys, the basic architecture in Docker consists of three parts. That is the Docker client, Docker host, and the Docker registry. So guys, it is a primary way for many Docker users to interact with Docker in the Docker client, right? Also, it uses command line utility or other tools which uses the Docker API in order to communicate with the Docker daemon. And the Docker client can communicate with more than one daemon. In Docker host, we have Docker daemon, containers, and images. Now guys, when we talk about the Kubernetes architecture, so Kubernetes, though Kubernetes is geared to drive the adoption of containers in both enterprises and emerging startups, the Kubernetes architecture is crucial in this adoption by making the process flexible and efficient. Kubernetes is an advocate of the master-slave architecture. A Kubernetes cluster is comprised of at least one master and several compute nodes. The master exposes the API, schedules deployments and manages the cluster. Each compute node runs a container runtime alongside an agent that is in constant communication with the master. In a sense, nodes in Kubernetes are the manpower of the cluster by exposing compute, networking and storage resources to applications. The Kubernetes fundamental unit of management is called as a pod. A pod is a collection of one or more containers that acts as a boundary for containers that share identical context and resources. The mechanism behind the grouping of pods is what differentiates between containerization and virtualization. So guys, this mechanism makes it possible to run several processes simultaneously. Pods are scaled by creating replica sets that are meant to secure the deployment of a specified number of pods. So guys, Kubernetes objects such as pods, replica sets and services are submitted to the master so that they can schedule a specific pod on a specific node. Thus, the node can extract images from the container image registry and coordinate the runtime to launch the container. This Kubernetes architecture is what makes the system modular and scalable, creating a cohesive environment for applications and the underlying infrastructure. Now guys, another parameter we have here is the documentation. So when we compare the documentation of both Docker and Kubernetes, so in Docker, Docker's documentation is more extensive, even more than Kubernetes. And it includes everything from installation to deployment and quick start instructions, as well as more detailed tutorials. Now in case of Kubernetes, it, it does not have an extensive documentation, but quite lesser than Docker's as we discussed above. But it does include everything from installation to deployment, a quick start instructions, as well as a more detailed tutorial. Right guys, now the another point is the installation. So guys, Docker's installation is quite easier. By using fewer commands, you can install Docker on your virtual machine or even on cloud. On the other hand, Kubernetes installation is provided to be quite difficult in Docker and even commands for Kubernetes are quite complex in Docker. So yes, it is little challenging to get started with Kubernetes, but once you get a hang of it, it gets easier for you. So another point is the GUI, that is the graphical user interface. So in both, when we talk about Docker, so Docker does not provide any dashboard, no GUI. GUI for you, right? Now, in case of Kubernetes, it does provide you a GUI that is a graphical user interface in the shape of a web-based UI dashboard, right? Where you can see all the stats of your ongoing task in your Kubernetes itself, right guys? Now, the another point is the popularity and trends. So guys, when we talk about the popularity, then I can say Docker is more popular than Kubernetes in terms of search as well as the community. If you look at the current trends, even Google says the same. It has gotten more number of search terms in every category, be it job search, be it technology search, be it community search. And guys, with community, I mean you get more number of developers out there, right, to help you support and solve your coding problems that you are facing, right? So if you check the number of questions posted on Stack Overflow, then Docker gets more number of portions every year than Kubernetes. 
right and guys you can see the graph right here from 2013 when it got launched and 2015 when kubernetes got launched how much amount of questions that they have got right and even you can see that docker is on the top number here right it graph keeps on increasing each and every year right guys and on github docker has got more number of repositories to kubernetes and more number of codes the commits contributors and users also then kubernetes right you can check the repositories for docker right here that is 434k repositories and for the code they are 12 million codes commits are more and users are 4k right and similarly in case of kubernetes they are like 43k repositories and the codes are 5 million and even the users are less here right it has got 2k users so i believe this should be enough to convince you about the popularity of docker right guys so guys, as we're done with all the parameters, now let us move forward and discuss about the limitations of both Docker and Kubernetes. So first and foremost, limitations of Docker. So guys, it has got missing features. So guys, there are a ton of features requests under progress like container self-registration and self-inspects, copying files from the host to the container and many more. The another point is the data in the container. There are times when a container goes down. So after that, it needs a backup and recovery strategy. Although we have several solutions for that, they are not automated or not very scalable yet, right? So another point is the graphical applications don't work well here, over here. So Docker was designed as a solution for deploying server applications that do not require a graphical interface. While there are some creative strategies such as X11 video forwarding that you can use to run a GUI app inside a container. These solutions are clunky at best. Right guys, so another point is the not all benefit from the containers. Yes, so in generally only applications that are designed to run as a discrete set of microservices stand to gain the most from containers. Otherwise, Docker's only real benefit is that it can simplify application delivery by providing an easy packaging mechanism. Right guys, next point is containers don't run at bare metal speed. So containers consume resources more efficiently than virtual machines, but containers are still subject to performance overhead due to overlay networking interfacing between containers and the host system and so on. If you want 100% bare metal performance, you need to use bare metal, not containers. Right guys? So another point is that Docker has poor monitoring. So basically the only type of monitoring solution that Docker offers is the stats command. That works fine if you need very basic information about your containers. But for more advanced monitoring, you are out of luck. Right guys, so there are some third party tools for that, but Docker does not has its own monitoring tool over here. Right, so guys, as we have discussed the limitations of using Docker, now let's move forward and discuss the limitations of using Kubernetes. So first and foremost, that it has got steep learning curve. Kubernetes is not an easy platform to learn, even for the most experienced developers and DevOps engineers. Teams seeking to adopt Kubernetes need to go a long way from the understanding of basic K8 concepts and primitives to mastering advanced development and operation concepts, right guys? So this journey takes a time and requires much. Now, another point to note is that it is hard to install and configure manually. So guys, Kubernetes consists of multiple components that should be configured and installed separately to initialize the cluster. If you install Kubernetes manually, you should also configure security, which includes creating a certificate authority and issuing certificates, right? So another point is the missing high availability piece. So Kubernetes does not provide a high availability mode by default. To create a fault tolerant cluster, you have to manually configure HA for your ETCD clusters, right guys? So master components such as Kube API servers, load balancers, nodes, and applications, right? Alternative solutions like Docker Swarm and Mesos or Marathon have at least a built-in master HA via Raft or Zookeeper Quorum. Right guys, so the another point is the compatibility issues. So sometimes when you have to work with containers, you may need to use Docker with Kubernetes. But at that time, Kubernetes is not compatible with existing Docker CLI and Compose tools. And it requires more efforts during the migration. Whenever you have to migrate to a state list, it actually requires many efforts, right guys? Another point is the limited functionality. It provides you with limited functionality when you are working with Docker APIs. Now that we are aware about all the essential parameters of both Docker and Kubernetes, now let us move forward and conclude our topic by discussing which one is better to choose. So as we are all aware that Kubernetes is an open source lightweight containerization technology and launched before Kubernetes, that is 
in 2013 has really gained a lot of popularity over the other containerization tools. And Kubernetes being launched in 2015 by Google is also an open source container management software is amongst the popular containerization tools. But due to its learning curve and difficulty to get started, most of the new beginners chooses Docker over it. But still, being a late comer in the market, Kubernetes has really uh, gained enough popularity to compete against Docker. That is because it was launched by Google. They already have got a huge amount of users and community, right guys? Since both these tools are already being used by a lot of companies, so choosing your career in any of them would be of higher relevance. But yes, Docker being a lightweight has got more number of features apart from the GUI, whereas working with Kubernetes is difficult uh, due to its complex commands. But once you get a hang of it, you can actually become a master of containerization. And guys, when we talk about their occupation, then both Docker and Kubernetes are here to stay as they are continuously changing to transform themselves in something better in the future. Implement the containers that your infrastructure needs the most. So migrating or starting your applications in any of these would be quite reliable for you. So in the end, I would like to add that there is no winner here because both of these tools have got their own pros and cons. If you are just getting into containerization, maybe the next step is to start learning more about Docker and trying it out for yourself. If you are here to think about how to take containerization to the next level in your organization, reading more about Kubernetes and some of its competitors is a great next step, right? Maybe you are finding Kubernetes is a difficult concept to master, right? Whatever be your next step, now is an exciting time. It is easier than ever to build and deploy novel applications that you can scale to millions of users with a few buttons. That was unthinkable 20 years ago, right? Today it is easy. As always, the next best step is just to get to building something new. Right guys, now I have a question for you. So which one of them supports both horizontal and vertical scaling? Option A, is it Docker? Option B, is it Kubernetes? Option C, is it both? And option D, none of them. You can let us know your answers in the comment section below to know if you're correct. A quick info guys, if you're looking to get certified in DevOps, then do check out IntelliPath's DevOps certification training course. The link is given in the description box below. So guys, that's all for today. If you have any further queries, then do let us know in the comment section below. We will reach out to you immediately. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video and giving us a precious time. See you again.